what I say, he understands maybe less English than the one we had yesterday, but he knows perfectly what he has to do. I'm always very glad with you. And, um, you know, as wife of, the, of a driver, I have some advantages, you know, because if they're not good with me, I complain in the evening and then it's my husband uh, that uh, <laughs> starts to, you know, manage the situation a little bit. My, why are you not stopping there, 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 etc. I'm not joking. Well, the largest island, which is the one more on the left side, uh, maybe you've noticed and farther on along the road, you will see that even a little bit better. Is a couple of islands, a couple of buildings at the top. Why? Because this island was for a very, very long time the private island of the Russian dancer Rudolf Nureyev, who died uh, approximately 30 years ago, more or less. It's one of the most important personalities of classical ballet. Maybe you don't know him because you're quite young, but if you like ballet, everyone knows Rudolf Nureyev, this Russian dancer, who uh, decided to buy the island and to stay there for a while uh, during summertime. Well, if you see now, on the left hand side, you can see it a little bit, on the right hand side, and on the left part of the island, you can see these little uh, buildings. Well, as Nureyev died, he was one of the first dying by AIDS during the time that AIDS was coming out, actually. The island was sold to Mr. Russo of Sorrento, who was the owner of several hotels in Sorrento, even you tell Hilton it's rent for instance so uh, it's not belonging to a poor person for sure but it belongs to a person I know very good because it was a good friend of my father and uh, I was never there even though he was inviting us uh, often there but you know we're not wearing our money Valentino Versace clothes all the time so we don't feel that comfortable in my family we're not that rich but the sense is that the only way you have to visit this island is being invited by Mr. Russo because it's a private island. So you're not allowed to go there with your own boat. You're not allowed. There's no way to go there with a with a regular boat like a ferry or an island because there's not. Generally, there's people on the island during summer. Then during the winter, it's completely empty. Uh, I try to imagine that uh, during summertime you're neither not allowed to. Uh, go too close to the island, you need to maintain a certain distance uh, from the island. And as you can notice, uh, the coast goes straight down to the water without leaving so much place to the big beaches. But anyway, once we will be in Amalfi and we will do our boat ride, we will uh, see even more details. It's very nice uh, doing the ride along the coastline because in this way you are able to see the coastline from two different perspectives and you're able to see what you miss from the bus. Huh? Personally, the water perspective is nicer than the one from the bus. But the one from the bus, it's not bad at all for sure. Hmm? Down below here, on your right hand side, huh? you see there's a rock down close here that with a little bit of imagination resembles to um, the profile of a gentleman. You can find long curly hair, a quite big nose. Down below here you can see that. Huh? Our chair is doing that so slow as possible. We're used to say that Garibaldi, Garibaldi is the most important personality into the Italian history. He was the one uh, making the unification of Italy between 1860 and 1661. And you can even notice that down below here, there's even a little beach. You see, there, there are small beaches catch sometimes. So that's the reason why you can't see the whole uh, detail of the coastline uh, from the bus. Well, Garibaldi is there in the morning and generally in the afternoon when the sunshine turns a little bit. It's not so easy to see that. So the first part of the month, because we're doing now, is the wildest part. So we're going now to do a, a whole part where there are lots of mountains, vegetation, but not so many houses. And then once after this first part, we start to have a part of the coastline where we have a little bit more villages and the people living and houses and so on. So the first village we will cross, it's called Positano. Then we have Praiano, then we have Conca dei Marini located up into the mountains, 
then we have Furore, and finally we have Amalfi. From when we started the coastline, when I told you that we were leaving, you know, the mains of Sorrento, Tina and Amalfi, it's 25 kilometers right. But to do this 25 kilometers, generally, we need approximately a couple of hours, right? A couple of hours because we do that softly, we stop sometimes in order to get a picture. Should we take a photo of the pineta, Shiro? Okay. Perfect. Benissimo, esatto, no, ma qua è bello qua, a me piace sempre la pineta, poi qua a terra non c'è due persi. Allora, I was asking Ciro if there's a little bit room farther on here, but I guess so. We stop a second for a picture, because I think it's worth it. You know, now during this time of the year we're lucky, because it's calm, it's peaceful, there are no thousand buses. And so uh, I think we will find everywhere and what we will find uh, a moment to stop. It's not properly back in places. You see, we stop uh, on the side of the road that uh, remains more or less in the middle of the road, but it's not a problem. Take a picture in any case. Huh? Eccoci qua. Benissimo. For the photographers, I suggest to get off and huh? to take a picture. Let's go. Andiamo.